I think that one of the things that's clear to a lot of us is that we can't come out of this crisis in the same shape as we went into it. It needs to be a very different world. It needs to be one which tackles the economic crisis, the social crisis that we have, the inequity in our society. But we also need to be looking as well at the environmental crisis and indeed climate change, which is a huge international issue in the same way as the debt crisis has become an international issue. That economies throughout the world are suffering and at every point it's the poorest, it's the least resilient, it's those with the least resources that are actually able to cope and in some cases able to survive at all. So for us as Greens, well, you know, we're not very keen on debt, we're not keen on debt to future generations, we're not keen on student debt, we're not keen on debt to poor, the world's poorest countries taken out by dictators and military regimes. But as Bob was saying, this sort of debt that we have here in the UK is very, very different. It's not the result of profligate spending. It is not the result of, you know, sort of really thinking that, you know, there is no tomorrow. What we have at the moment is it's a collapse of revenue coming in. It's an issue as well that we know exactly where the problems were lying, that it was within the international finance system. And it was very much as well with governments that thought that allowing banks, allowing the financial system to more or less regulate itself was somehow going to be safe for our future. Uh, I think we've seen the outcome of that. So as I say, the UK debt is not irresponsible. And it can be managed. It's something where you know we can look still to actually delivering without having to go through the cutbacks that this government is putting forward. And that one of the things that was done when this was being discussed in Parliament was Caroline Lucas, our one MP, thank God for the people of Brighton Pavilion, um, put forward a report entitled Cuts the Callous Contrick, which sets out very, very clearly how if you actually want to avoid the cuts, one of the things that you can do is look at increasing revenue. And somehow this seems to have escaped the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats that you can sort the problem not by cutting, but by actually looking at what you do for revenue. And indeed the cuts, most of them, I mean, you know, if they were cutting Trident, I think that was a very good idea, but most of the cuts that they are putting forward are really stupid economics that one of the things that's become crystal clear is that those countries which have good welfare systems, those welfare systems act as an economic stabilizer in times of shock. They are one of the things that actually keeps any sort of economy going, that actually really stops things being much, much worse. They are also one of the things that countries with functioning social security systems functioning welfare systems are also much better placed to come out of the economic shock that we've been going through. So it is bad economics to cut welfare benefits. They are essential to the, a modern economy to actually provide a degree of stability.